Chapter Two of Poison Romance and Poison Mysteries by Charles John Samuel Thompson. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter Two: Poisons and Superstition. Among the ignorant, poisons have ever been closely associated with superstition, and thus we find in the Dark Ages, even among the more civilized nations of the West a belief in the occult concerning those things the action of which they did not understand to most of the poisonous herbs used by the ancients certain curious superstitions were attached the mandrake in particular excited the greatest veneration on this account it is supposed this plant is the same which the ancient hebrews called dudaim that these people held it in the highest esteem in the days of jacob is evident from the notice of his having been found by reuben who carried it to his mother and the inducement which tempted leah to part with it proves the value then set upon this remarkable plant it was believed to possess the property of making childless wives become mothers mandrake was among the more important drugs employed by the ancients for producing anaesthesia doses of the wine made from the root were administered before amputating a limb or the application of the hot iron cautery pliny says mandrake is taken against serpents and before cutting and puncture lest they be felt sometimes the smell is sufficient according to apuleius half an ounce of the wine would make a person insensible even to the pain of amputation lyman states it was this wine mingled with myrrh that was offered to the saviour on the cross it being commonly given to those who suffered death by crucifixion to allay in some degree their terrible agonies in shakespeare's time mandrake still kept its place in public estimation as a narcotic thus we have cleopatra asking for the drug that she may sleep out this great gap of time while her antony is away and iago when his poison begins to work in the mind of the moor exclaims not poppy nor mandragora nor all the drowsy syrups of this world shall ever medicine thee to that sweet sleep some of the old names applied to the plant such as semihomo and anthropomorphon refer to the appearance of the root while the term love apples applied to the fruit relates to their imaginary aphrodisiacal properties it is mentioned in the scriptures in connection with such episodes josephus states baras supposed to be mandrake was capable of expelling demons from those possessed demosthenes the athenian orator is said to have compared his lethargic hearers to those who had eaten mandrake the Ascorides states that a drachma of mandragora taken in a draught or eaten in a cake causes infatuation and takes away the use of reason the greeks bestowed on it the name of circium derived from the witch circe they believed that when the mandrake was dragged up from the earth it gave a dreadful shriek and struck the daring person dead who had had the presumption to pull it up the method of obtaining it therefore was by fastening the plant to the tail of a dog who thus drew the root from the ground the shriek was supposed to be due to an evil spirit who dwelt in the plant the romans also were very particular in the manner in which they obtained the root pliny tells us that he who would undertake this office should stand with his back to the wind and before he begins to dig make three circles round the plant with the point of a sword and then turning to the west proceed to take it up the small roots which are much twisted and gnarled sometimes bear a resemblance to the form of man and this was turned to account by some of the old german doctors who fashioned them into rude images and sold them as preventives of evil and danger they called them abrunes these images were regularly dressed every day and consulted as oracles and were manufactured in great numbers they were introduced into england in the time of henry the eighth and met with ready purchasers 
to increase their value and importance the roots were said by the vendors to be produced from the flesh of criminals which fell from the gibbet and that they only grew in such situations lord bacon notices their use in the following paragraph some plants there are but rare that have a morsy or downy root and likewise that have a number of threads like beards as mandrakes whereof witches and impostors make an ugly image giving it the form of a face at the top of the root and these strings to make a broad beard down to the foot madame de genlis states that the mandrake roots should be wrapped in a sheet for that then they will bring increasing good luck the plant is still used medicinally in china where it is said to be largely taken by the mandarins who believe it will give them increased intellectual powers and prolong their lives from recent investigation the activity of the mandrake root is proved to be due to an alkaloid called mandragorine the black hellebore melampus root or christmas rose another poisonous plant known to the ancients was believed to have magical properties it was called after melampus a great physician who flourished at pylos about one hundred years after the time of moses or about one thousand five hundred and thirty years before the birth of christ he is reputed to have cured the daughters of protus king of argos of mental derangement with hellebore pliny mentions that the daughters of protus were restored to their senses by drinking the milk of goats which had fed on hellebore black hellebore root was used by the ancients to purify their homes and to hallow their dwellings and they believed that by strewing it about it would drive away evil spirits this ceremony was performed with great devotion and accompanied with the singing of solemn hymns they also blessed their cattle in the same manner with hellebore to keep them free from spells of the wicked for these purposes it was dug up with many religious ceremonies such as drawing a circle round the plant with a sword then turning to the east a humble prayer was finally offered up by the devotee to apollo and asclepius for leave to dig up the root the flight of the eagle was particularly attended to during the ceremony for when this bird approached near the spot during the celebration of the rite it was considered so ominous as to predict the certain death of the person who uprooted the plant in the course of the year others ate garlic previous to the rite which was supposed to counteract the poisonous effluvia of the plant Dioscorides relates that when Carnides, the Cyrenaic philosopher, undertook to answer the books of Zeno, he sharpened his wit and quickened his spirit by purging his head with powdered hellebore. It is recorded that the Gauls never went to the chase without rubbing the point of their arrows with this herb, believing that it rendered all the game killed with them the more tender it is of this plant juvenal sarcastically observed misers need a double dose of hellebore with several uncivilized nations in africa the practice of compelling persons accused of crime or witchcraft to undergo the ordeal of swallowing some vegetable poison is still carried on for this purpose certain tribes in western africa use the calabar bean sometimes called the ordeal bean which contains a powerful poisonous principle called physostigmine. It was customary at one time in Old Calabar, and the mouth of the Niger, where the plant grows, to destroy it whenever found, a few only being preserved to supply seeds for judicial purposes, and of these seeds the store was kept in the custody of the native chief. Witchcraft, indeed, may be said to play the chief part in the daily life of all african natives and to witchcraft they attribute every ill that befalls them two classes of witchcraft are supposed to exist the one practised secretly by evil-doers and the other practised by the witch-doctors with the view of destroying the effects of the former witch-doctors are in fact the greatest power in the land they hold the lives of all in their hands and are daily employed to satisfy the passions of their neighbours 
according to native ideas says one who has had a long experience among the native tribes death or sickness never occurs through natural causes but is always the result of somebody's act whenever any one is accused of having practised witchcraft or of having committed any other crime calabar bean or muave is used to decide the case the taking of these is the great trial by ordeal and usually except when the accuser is a witch-doctor accused and accuser have both to submit to the test chiefs however may appoint a deputy to undergo the ordeal in their stead muave consists of a specially prepared drug usually made by scraping the wood of a certain tree known to the witch-doctors this is mixed with water and both parties swallow the decoction in a very short time the drug begins to act vomiting sets in followed by convulsions and death of course in most cases the result depends on the dose given sometimes both accuser and accused are seized with vomiting in that case the natives say that the medicine has been badly prepared and the operation is repeated at other times both die in that case also the medicine was no good but the trial cannot be renewed as may be readily understood when the guilt of one of the parties has been established by his death his property is at once looted his wife and children being killed so great however is the faith of the natives in the infallibility of the muave test and they so fully believe that in case of innocence they will be proof against the deadly effects of the drug that they will never hesitate to submit themselves to the trial in fact they will frequently volunteer to go through it and insist upon taking muave even when falsely accused from this account it will be easily seen that the witch-doctor who prepares the muave can easily get rid of any person he may wish in some districts the drug used for the trial instead of causing death when it has not acted as an emetic merely causes purging but the result is the same as the man is at once put to death this is probably due to a weaker decoction of the drug having been prepared the same traveller states in many instances his own men have offered to take muave in order to refute the slightest charge trial by ordeal which still survives in the dark continent was practised by other and more civilised nations in the early christian era End of chapter two